On August 31st, 2004, at 5 a.m. in Richmond Hill, Georgia, a Burger King employee found someone unconscious, sunburnt, injured, and naked behind a Burger King dumpster. He had no ID, no idea who he was or how he got there. He had trauma to his skull and ant bites on his body. He was brought to St. Joseph's Hospital in Savannah with no ID. He was in the hospital records as Burger King Doe. He believed his first name was Benjamin, and the last name Kyle was used as a placeholder. He also believed he was born 10 years before Michael Jackson was born. He also thought he may have passed through Richmond Hill, Georgia, either on Route 17 or Interstate 95, in late August 2004. He also believed he may have been traveling because of Hurricane Charlie. According to The Guardian, when Kyle awoke, he had lost his sight. My cataracts were gone, and I didn't have insurance. I couldn't see more than a couple of feet. After being bounced between hospitals in Savannah, 10 miles from Richmond Hill, Kyle ended up in a men's shelter called Grace House, where he roomed with alcohol and drug abusers and was trapped by his blindness. You had to leave Grace House during the day, he says. All I can do is sit in the courtyard and wait for them to reopen. One morning I crossed the road. I couldn't see if there was any cars coming. He pauses and I asked if this was a suicide attempt. Well, I couldn't see the cars, he answered. Nine months after he was found, a charity paid for Kyle's cataracts to be treated. When he finally saw himself in the mirror, he didn't recognize himself. He had thought he was 20 years younger. Kyle then found himself at the J.C. Lewis Health Center. Catherine Slater was a psychiatric nurse working there. When Kyle was finally fit to leave J.C. Lewis, his lack of a social security number limited his options. Slater offered that he could stay there and work, get paid a small wage, helping to assist the patients. Also in 2007, he was diagnosed with disassociative amnesia. Slater helped Kyle try to find his identity. She contacted Georgia Senator Jack Kingston, who notified the FBI to help assist. Through hypnosis, he had partial recollection of his social security number, which was 3 blank 5 dash 44 dash blank 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 blank. He also recalled the possibility of living in Indianapolis and Denver. Might have had two or three brothers, some restaurant experience. He had very little memory beyond the early 1980s. And without a social security number, Kyle would be in and out of homelessness. DNA testing, facial recognition databases, and various news archives were utilized to try to get closer to finding Benjamin Kyle's true identity. He was on Dr. Phil in 2008, which inadvertently led to skepticism by many. Closing crews there anywhere from 11.30 to 1 o'clock in the morning. If his body had been out there unconscious, the closing crew would have seen him. They definitely would have seen him. In 2011, Kyle was approached to be part of a documentary by Florida State grad student John Wilkstrom. He had moved to Jacksonville, Florida to participate in the documentary, Traveling by Foot. The documentary was called Finding Benjamin. On the man with no name. The story of surviving a brutal attack almost seven years ago that left him with amnesia. One that seems right out of a soap opera script. Benjamin Kyle. Benjamin Kyle. Benjamin Kyle has been. Hello, my name is Benjamin Kyle. Finally, on September 16th, 2015, Kyle announced on his Facebook page that his identity had been established by C.C. Moore and a team of researchers. Moore is a genetic genealogist. She consults with many TV shows about DNA and helps law enforcement solve cold cases. And according to Kyle's Facebook page, a little over two months ago, I was informed by C.C. Moore that they established my identity using DNA. Many people have shared their DNA profiles so they may be compared with mine. Through a process of elimination, they determined my ancestral bloodline and who my relatives were. A DNA test by a close relative has confirmed we are related. On November 21st, 2016, Kyle's true identity was revealed to be William Burgess Powell. He was born on August 29th, 1948, raised in Lafayette, Indiana. In 1976, Powell went off the grid. He cut ties with his family and possessions. His family filed a missing persons report at the time, and police found he had moved to Boulder, Colorado, where he had moved on a whim with a co-worker and drinking buddy. Powell had been working at a movie theater in downtown Lafayette before he left for Colorado. The report stated he had last been seen in Lafayette in the company of Charles Chico Getz, a co-worker. According to the New Republic, Chico Getz recalls his relationship with William Powell. After work, Getz explained, he and Powell used to drink cheap whiskey together and talk. Powell was a loner. He had few companions, no romantic partner. Getz figured he had been Powell's closest friend, if only by default. We were a couple of drunks, Getz told me. We did what drunks do, but we weren't close. Their decision to leave Indiana had been impulsive. 
one Sunday night after hours of drinking, Getz proposed that they move to Boulder. Powell had recently received a small settlement from a previous employer after he had slipped on an icy dock and broke his arm. The last time Getz saw Powell was in 1977 when he visited Boulder and stayed for a month in Powell's unfurnished one-bedroom apartment. Powell was living alone and didn't appear to have any friends. According to Social Security records, he had worked at several restaurants in Denver from 1978 to 1983. What did William Powell do from 1983 to 2004? That remains a mystery. But from 2004 to 2015, he lived his life trying to find out who is Benjamin Kyle. 